You are looking at images here of nuclear power plants located near water, specifically near rivers in this country. If you tend to think of nuclear power in terms of radioactive leakage, your first thought might be, ugh, that stuff is going to leak into the water. But producing nuclear power involves such intense heat, such enormous temperatures, that reactors need lots and lots of water to cool down their unimaginably hot nuclear fuel. So engineers build nuclear plants near water on purpose so they can pump that water through the reactor's cooling systems and keep them from overheating. Here's the thing, though, about water. It has a tendency to not stay put. We've been through a lot of crazy deep science together on this show since the nuclear disaster started in Japan. But you do not need to know your fission from your fusion to know that water is liquid and liquid moves. And if you have more water than your river can hold, what you then have is a flood. If you also have a nuclear power plant alongside that river, then what you have is this. Look at that. Fort Calhoun Station, less than 20 miles from Omaha, Nebraska, surrounded by the very much flooded Missouri River, and as photographed by the Associated Press. Local, state, and federal officials say, this might look alarming, but don't worry, everything's fine. They've got an eight-foot rubber wall to keep the water from coming in. And anyway, the plant's been shut down for weeks for refueling. They say, do not lose sleep over the idea that the Fort Calhoun nuclear power plant has been sitting two feet below the level of the giantly flooded Missouri River. Nebraska has been battling record floods this year along the Missouri from heavy snowpacks and rain. The Fort Calhoun nuclear power plant is actually one of two reactors in the flooding region. The other one is the Cooper nuclear station, an hour and a half downriver near Brownville, Nebraska. The Cooper nuclear station is still running at full capacity. But again, local officials say, don't worry, smiles, everyone smiles. They say, quote, Cooper is at 903 feet elevation. And utility officials said the river would have to climb to 902 feet at Brownville before officials would shut down the plant. So there's nothing to worry about until you're at 902 feet. Right now, the river is at 900 feet. So they say, don't worry. We're at 900 feet, nothing to worry about till we're at 902 feet. And we are sure keeping a close eye on this thing. We're checking the gauges. Oh, did somebody say gauges? The Lincoln Journal Star reporting that one of the two pressure gauges near Brownville, near the Cooper nuclear station, quote, went bad this weekend. The bad gauge gave a reading for the Missouri River that was too high by more than a foot. And of course, that's better than if the gauge had read too low. If the gauge had said everything was OK when, in fact, the plant was flooding, that would be very bad. But you know what? What would be awesome is if we had real confidence that the gauges actually worked correctly. Nuclear power is kind of a high wire act by definition. You do not really have all that much leeway. This week, the Associated Press reported that most of the commercial nuclear sites in the United States are leaking radioactive tritium. Radioactive tritium is leaking out of three quarters of America's nuclear reactors, out of the old pipes buried underground when the plants were built. And yes, that means in some cases that radioactive tritium is making it into the groundwater. Quote, leaks from at least 37 of those facilities contained concentrations exceeding the federal drinking water standards, sometimes at hundreds of times the limit. Fort Calhoun in Nebraska is one of the reactors that has had a leaking radioactive tritium problem. Fort Calhoun was also found to have leaked some cesium-137 about four years ago. Now, Fort Calhoun's groundwater uh, is rather swamped by its other water worries. In Japan, where a tsunami shut down the cooling system at the Fukushima nuclear plant in March, workers have been trying to cool the Fukushima reactors down. The Japanese government says it believes that three of the four damaged reactors there suffered meltdowns and maybe even melt throughs, which means the nuclear fuel melted through the thing that was holding it and onto the floor of the reactor building, which of course is a total nightmare. The Fukushima reactor disaster, we all remember when it started. The important thing to know about the Fukushima reactor disaster is that it is not over. It is still ongoing. This weekend, the new water filters that they expected to last a month for filtering the radioactive water, they expected these new filters to last a month. They became saturated with radiation after five hours, not because there was anything wrong with them, but just because there is that much radiation after the tsunami flooded in and knocked out the cooling pumps and the reactor fuel melted down. In a new report on the Fukushima disaster, the International Atomic Energy Agency spelled out 16 lessons from what happened in Japan. Lesson number one, in part, plant layout should be based on maintaining a dry site concept. 
The agency recommending building plants with a dry site concept in mind wherever that's practical. Keep it all dry. It's a little late for the plant layout process in Nebraska now, but you can bet that they would recommend a dry site concept as well. We will stay on this story of the Missouri River's troubles and its unexpectedly nuclear consequences uh, in the heartland as the story continues to unfold. Missouri River uh, does not seem to be, does not look to be going down anytime soon, and we will stay on that story. That does it for us tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Meanwhile,